We want to welcome all of His glory nation. From east to west and north to south, we bring you the word of His glory for today. Today is uh, March 8th, 2017, on the Western calendar. It's the 10th of Adar, 5,777, on the Hebrew year of the Jubilee, the year of the sword. We enter sundown uh, tonight as uh, the feast of uh, Esther in the book of Esther uh, for three nights uh, from uh, uh, feast and, and prayer, or uh, I'm sorry, feast, fast and prayer. We'll be fasting all over His Glory Nation from uh, sundown tonight till sun up or sundown on uh, March 11th, which is Purim. We'll go over the Purim uh, later this week, probably on Friday. But the, the, the fast and the prayer, mostly the prayer, is around gritting God's revival to go out throughout all the nations, to release the Holy Spirit to all the people around the nations so we can see great revival, see great healings, and see a great movement of the Holy Spirit from east to west to north to south. We pray uh, and, uh, and, and fast in the name of the Most High God. Today's message is going to go uh, around where the world looks at the, the most famous people, the strongest people, the, the worldly people as the most powerful. God looks at the common person, the person's heart, the intentions of one's heart. And that's God uses those people for his purposes and for his glory because they're the least likely to do it. And it shows you the glory of the Lord, that the, the glory of the Lord can go with, work through anybody that has a heart that loves him with all their heart, their soul, and their mind, as Jesus said, the number one commandment, and to love their neighbor as their self. And you see, as we mentioned through some of these people in scriptures, that were the common people, that were the least likely. They had warts, as we all have warts. They fell short of the glory of God, but they had a heart for the Lord, and they kept reaching, and they kept searching, and they never gave up, and they kept going down the path of the Most High God. And we see the opposite happen, too, where the world looks on the world powers of Nebuchadnezzar and Cyrus and King Saul, the first king of Israel. And God used them in his purpose and for his glory, and he humbled them. Here Nebuchadnezzar makes his own statue, being told that he won't use the greatest king of all, the king of gold. But God humbled him so that he would know who the Most High God is, to the point where King Nebuchadnezzar literally was grazing as a cow for seven years to know and to honor the Most High God. He used Cyrus through the prophet Isaiah, telling about Cyrus to his name, what he would do for the people of Israel 100 years before he was born. So God can use the powers of the nations, the pagan nations, for his purpose, for his glory. But the common person that has a love for him, he uses in the greatest way and the least expected. The reason he does that is because the world is expecting something big and spectacular, and God is using the common, as he did with his son, Jesus Christ, who was born in a manger, a servant that came into the manger, our King of kings and Lord of hosts, born into the servitude, born in to be a servant, to wash his disciples, feet so that we could know him and to go on the cross and be crucified with criminals as the scripture said so that we could have eternal life with him we see Israel when they demanded from God Elohim to find to give them a king so he showed them what they thought in their own eyes was the best king and that was Saul the scripture tells us in the book of Samuel that he stood head, his head above all the, all the shoulders of everyone else and he was handsome so they looked at him being bigger and stronger and better looking than everybody. Obviously, he needs to be our king. But that's not what God was looking for. He's looking for a heart that, w- that will serve him. And God has everything in control. And he wants to use the common person, the person that has a heart for the Lord, that will be the meek in this world, that will be the first in the eternal world, that is last in this world. Let's go through some of them that he's used through the scripture and how God used them and they were the least likely. We see Jacob. He was the deceiver. He came in, and he became the father of Israel. We see in Genesis 27. He worked through many issues, but God loved him and gave him an everlasting covenant through his his father Isaac and father Abraham. We see Abraham, who was born into a pagan family. His father Terah was worshiping other gods and was part of a kingship that was sorcery of Nimrod. But he used Abraham to be the father of all nations and to give him an Abrahamic promise that through his line, Isaac and Jacob, there would be eternal kingdom that the Messiah would rule over forever. We see Joseph, who's sold by his, 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 uh, his brothers as a slave. And he endured in prison and he overcame and he sought the face of the Lord through fasting and prayer. 
and God used him to raise up and save Egypt, but more importantly, to bring his family together, to unite and create the, the, the nation of Israel, to go back later on in the land of milk and honey. We see that in Genesis 39. We see Moses, who was born of a Hebrew, a Hebrew slave that was supposed to be drowned by the Pharaoh, but was taken in and could have had all the luxuries of the world and living through Pharaoh's house, but turned away and said, no, I want to protect my people. I want to go with what the Lord is telling me to do. Moses committed murder, but God used him as the exodus to bring the people out of, uh, out of slavery of Egypt. God is using the least likely, and, he, and, and that's what he did with Moses, we see in Exodus 3. Gideon was a humble farmer. He was the least. Remember, he says, I'm just the least of my father's tribe. And he used Gideon to have a great battle over the Midianites, as we see in Judges 6 through 11. We see Hannah, who loved the Lord but was barren, and, and gave the Lord and, and, and fasted to the Lord and said, The Lord, to, to Eli at the time, who thought she was drunk when she was coming up to pray to the Most High God, and said, I will give my son as, as, as a, as a, to be a priest in the priestly line. And her firstborn was the prophet Samuel. And she stood by it, and she had faith in the Lord, and the Lord delivered her, as the Scripture says in Samuel. The Lord remembered her barren ways and, and, and gave, him, gave her a very important person through history, and that's Samuel. We see, we see David, who is the least of the seven brothers. He was the eighth brother that wasn't even there when Samuel went up to anoint the next one. Remember, Samuel was told by the Lord, to anoint Saul, Saul as the first one. So, so he's, he's looking, and, and, and Samuel's looking at these boys, and he sees the first brother of Jesse, or the first son of Jesse, and says, surely this must be the one. He's the biggest and the strongest. But God tells Samuel, the man looks at the outwardly way. I look at the heart. And he says, there's got to be another one. And he says, it's David. And David, we see, came to be the greatest king of all of Israel. We see that in the story of David starting in 1 Samuel 16. We see Ezra, who was a seer, that kept on praying to the Lord, and the Lord allowed him to go back and rebuild the, 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 the city of Jerusalem. We see that in Ezra and Nehemiah. We talked about Esther. Esther stood up to save her people from annihilation. And we're going to talk more about that in the, in the festival of Purim and how Purim is important. How, how Haman was trying to destroy all the Israelites at that time. But a faithful remnant of Mordecai and a faithful remnant of Esther stood up to the king and saved her people with faith. She was just a slave girl, but God used her to save the nation of Israel. And that's why we celebrate Purim this coming week. That's why there's a fasting and prayer for the next three days. Part of the reason and the other reason, obviously, is we want to open up the Holy Spirit to come down and spread from east to west. We see Matthew as a tax collector. The tax collectors were considered the least and the ho most horrible in all of the nation of Israel. One, because they were taking their money and they were working for the Roman government. And they were considered, uh, they, they were considered thieves. They were considered the worst. They were considered worse than the IRS that they were going against their own people by collecting taxes from the Romans, and they were, they were, they were putting the, the price of it up high so that they could get greedy and get more money. So they were detested by the, the, by, by the Jewish people. But Jesus Christ used Matthew and brought him out and sat in his house, and he became an apostle, and he wrote, and wrote one of the, the, four, the, the, the four Gospels. We see in Matthew 9.9, 9, and we see the apostle Peter. He was just a plain fisherman but through the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Ghost on, in, in the book of Acts and through Pente Pentecost. We see that he, he became elegant in speech, but not by his own worldly ways. It was the wisdom of the Holy Spirit that came on him. And God gave him the words through the Holy Spirit to speak in the book of Acts. And he became a pillar. He became an apostle. He became a great leader in the first church and a great leader in the name of Christ not a great leader of putting Peter himself first. Remember when Jesus asked him, Peter, do you love me? You know I do. Go feed my sheep. He asked him three times. Why did he ask him three times? He asked him three times because Peter denied Christ three times. And he wanted to make sure Peter was going to be committed in his love and know that he was the Christ and he would do all things to glorify the name of the Most High God through his son, Jesus Christ, and that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And Peter did that, as, as well as the rest of the disciples. And we see that in Matthew 9, and this is just an attestament to God, how God uses the least likely in this world. 
He uses those who have, or can humble themselves and be used and walk and, and, and be molded into his glory. He uses those people, and he uses those people for his kingdom glory, where the world would say, this person is the least. David, the eighth of his son, just a boy, a shepherd. Moses, being a Hebrew boy, floating down the river. Peter, being just an average fisherman with no education. But with your heart, you love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind, and through his son, Jesus Christ, and love your neighbor as yourself. God will use you. He will use you for great things, for his glory, not for your glory. Because the difference between them and what the world thinks, the, the, the glory of the world is based on the glory of themselves. God is looking for those who are going to humble themselves, not be exalted. It's as the scripture says, he who is exalted will be humbled. He who will be humbled will be exalted. He who humbles himself and puts God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit first in their life, will be exalted, not for our glory, but for his glory, because we are just a servant to walk his truth. We pray that this been a blessing has been a, a blessing to you, to show that all through the scripture, God can use anybody for his glory, and he uses the least likely. And they have warts, just like we have warts. They have a sin nature like we have sin nature. They've got it wrong, just like we get it wrong. But they sought the face of the Lord. They repented and, and asked the Lord to take over their life and lead them and do all things for his glory and for his purpose. May the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob bless you until next time. God bless you.